something uh, that else that's ki- that's interesting, sparking a discussion, is um, Samurai Showdown is launching on the XX in March, right? And it's right. coming. It's coming with uh, you know, a bunch of. Uh, stuff including all the characters, uh, the full package, the, the the full DLC, all that shit. Um, but what's interesting here is it's also shipping with a 120 FPS mode, and this is a first high spec mode will allow the game to run at 120 frames per second. This is very noteworthy because fighting games don't do that. And... Yeah, six feet away. That changes a lot of how a game feels. If a game is running with a higher frame rate, then, um, in theory, uh, input lag should be reduced... And it might be more responsive feeling overall, but it changes like literally frame data of the game. It changes lots of aspects of like how things feel, the timing of how you play. It's going to be really weird uh, and interesting to see what this does. I can't, I don't know what effect it'll have on netcode. I don't think uh, we, uh, we can know until we're looking at it but the sam show net code was always dog shit to begin with so you know they're not putting in rollbacks uh, they haven't announced that so what it is what it is like whatever but um r- regardless of that part of it uh yeah there is now a bit of a, a a discussion happening as a result of this where it's like hold on so is this something that we can expect to start see start happening more and more often and what does it mean, right? Because it, it affects the game in a way where if someone's playing a non-120 FPS version of the game, they're getting a very different experience on their hands that you're learning at least on a, you know, a, um, like somewhat competitive level. And not everyone has TVs that can support that right now or things that can output it. So then the discussion kind of comes to be like, well... Other games that uh, are about this tech get to get um, people, like companies like NVIDIA and ATI interested because now they can directly market to those fan bases to sell video cards. And uh, we're now wondering whether or not fighting games are going to have a, like, you know, video card push phase if there's enough games pushing for 120 FPS. And also, how exclusionary is it going to be if a lot of people that don't have a setup will not be able to participate in a game that's running in high frame rate mode? I think the funniest part about this whole conversation in the back of the head, the whole time you're talking, I'm thinking, Sam Show, huh? Does that mean if you kick up the game speed to 120 FPS, you get to see awesome 32 frame delay counter in the upper right corner of the screen? I don't do I don't trash know, ass net code. I don't know what this means for um for net code, dude. I have no idea. Uh, like well, double on, the it's, frame rate, same delays, double just double yeah, minus thirty four frames. Fuck it. Not a not not ATI, AMD, AMD, thank you. Um fucking <laughs> ATI rage. I'm going back to the old days, yeah. Uh anyway. The the idea is is um it's interesting because it'll obviously make like games will look better, um, but this this problem of like when a game is on the bleeding edge of what tech can do, but like it leaves some players behind. Where do we fall on like what is acceptable and what is not? You know, should we push the know, envelope man. or should you be like World I... of Warcraft and keep running on whatever you can? I used to play fucking Counter-Strike and Day of Defeat in fucking 1997. And that shit was like, do you want to win? Go spend some dollars. Do you want to fucking kill? 
Get a better mouse, get a bigger monitor, put a fucking fat video card in there. Hmm. See, Because you're not going to cut it on your fucking GeForce 2. On the one hand, you know, keeping things... Uh... <laughs> Keeping things in, uh, uh, open and inviting for people is always a, is always a good idea. On the other hand, like you're always gonna want to, you're gonna have games and companies and people that are interested in pushing the envelope to make things look as good as possible. And two, it is inevitable. Eventually, if the tech exists, it's gonna start to become more and more regular. It's just, do they have enough? Or is there enough um, access to that tech out in the world at the moment? You know. Uh, I and, and I think like there was an obviously the, the important thing is if you put a shit baby mode, bad hardware level settings in there, right? It's like my computer sucks. Can I run at 120 FPS? Yeah, if you turn it into stick figures. Ah, but the but 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 the problem again is like that like you but you can't really right like you, it's not that simple because like. If I'm not mistaken, totally if if I'm not mistaken, like, isn't doesn't 120 FPS also require like a monitor that is special to enough to be able? Absolutely to not to see it. Yes, to use it. No. Okay, so it'll display a um, scaled down version, a downscaled version of it, but it'll be running it correctly hardware wise yeah but game speed should be the same at 60 fps so it should have no real problem like this, this doesn't seem to be an issue like hmm. if it's you, for okay. game time on, on 120 like if i run if i run at like 90 fps on my tv i can feel a little bit of a difference compared to 60 okay uh, so i limit if... everything to 60 because i just want it to be stable but so then, okay, that's not then that's not as bad as I thought. Then then it's it's a little no. bit less of an issue. Okay, I thought that it meant people had to get new screens. No, no, you thought it was like die pores. A little bit. Well, you should was... what you should have worried about way more is about tournaments where they have to now get 120 hertz fucking setups. Yeah, I, I mean, but oh, look, God. tournaments. God. But dude, tournaments are used to the struggle at this point. Like yeah. at the end of the day, you kind of need to have um you're gonna if you watch TOs, dude, they're fucking resilient in getting a community together, in getting funds together, and just doing it. Like they've had And to, it is for Samurai Showdown. From generation So they need like four TVs. <laughs> from generation to generation. Um the the issues that arise from swapping over to setups and, and getting shit together is like they've surmounted higher challenges than replacing all the tvs i mean getting a bunch of crts these days is fucking crazy but they find ways to I'm do it i'm i'm like I, I don't i don't mean to blow you up and i don't mean to cause a stink i'm really torn about like because i don't want to get into the net code thing again so i'm gonna try and keep it short I'm torn about even talking about new fighting games in the COVID world with bad net code. Like, the games might as well functionally not even exist in a lot of cases. Like, we're talking about Sam Show's fucking, uh, like, 120 hertz, and while that's pretty interesting, like, for fucking who? Okay, like, well... no tournament, the game's online is trash... It's a single uh, player training right now. Okay, well, one, the Sam Show community does meet and play through Parsec. So that exists. Does that do it? Uh they do it. And that's no, how no, people but are. What's what's Parsec's like uh viability on that? Like I'm Parsec's curious. viability is is good. It's it's working. People are able to play and they're using <laughs> uh setups that are like uh host neutral by having a host server uh that both players connect to and get uh, decent enough connection and are basically having viable tournaments. They're running it. Um, shout outs to Angela Pickles and Andy OCR. They're running their weeklies. People are doing, you know, regular meetups for that. And Marvel are getting played on Parsec on the regular basis. Um, that so is that... like so impressive for Parsec. Yeah. And like so embarrassing yes. for 
a company that makes their own net code that is worse than this hacked solution. But just to let you know before you jump down there that this exists and it works and it's active in the community is alive and using Parsec to play against each other and Parsec is wonderful. Um, so, That's you know, bef everyone be aware of this, please, before misinformation spreads. But well, I I've bring got Parsec up... on, on my computer right now. But I but but the second thing is I bring this up because um, yeah this is on a console so it's not going to have that accessibility. However, I mainly bring it up to talk about the 120 FPS gateway issue. But uh, that that's that's the main thing. Like I, the the main reason why I included it in the docket not was because Sam mm -hmm. was getting ported, but because I was like, oh, 120 yeah. FPS fighting games. That's a discussion. Hey, everyone's going to call me a boomer with small eyes. I think 144 hertz shit is nice but i think it's massively overrated i think it's dramatically overrated like people are treating it like it's the fucking second coming and it's like yeah it's a little more responsive it's nice but it's not it's not the fucking be all end all like especially when like the main thing that i am constantly still still fighting on everything is like can we please please get a fucking like i would rat instead of raising the ceiling i would like to raise the floor please and get 60 as a default or at least easier to hit like there's games it doesn't matter how much fucking power i throw at them i still can't hit a fucking lock 60 because the game's optimized to garbage we're gonna keep. We're gonna keep that. Like games have always like been scattershot in that way, where some things are reaching for the moon and others are barely running on a potato, and it'll it'll continue to be that way as the tech continues to grow, right? I don't think we're ever gonna get like everything that should to run a locked sixty. I just think some devs are not capable of doing that work. They're not capable of optimizing like, at that level. They they won't do it. It's been years now. Like, just just like, th like I see people just bragging about their 144 hertz setups and all this shit, and oh, this game's so incredible at it. It's like, go play fucking Age of Calamity. Like, would you rather have some games run at 144 or everything run at 60? Because holy shit, oh my it god. What sucks is uh, entering a generation where, like, when I use the Elgato to play something on stream, I'm getting a worse version of it. And when it's, we're done with the stream, I got to go put, plug it into a, a regular HDMI input because the yeah, Elgato that's, that's can only... Yeah, that's one of the reasons only... why I got, a, like, a, a new Avermedia. You should get an Avermedia uh, fucking thing. That thing's great. Does it actually do oh, 120? But... It does 120, no problem? Uh, I don't know about. Uh, ooh, I don't remember if it does 120, but it does HDR properly, and it passes which is why through. I, I picked it up. Oh yeah, it passes through. It looks looks nice. I can't really? tell the difference, and I'm like because an asshole about this stupid shit. I have I have uh, a I have the HD 60s. I have uh, the external and in bake and um, um, PCI Express one, and then I have uh, an Aver Media that I capture the uh, channel video to, but. Uh, what's the one that actually does 120 because, or that does uh, HDR? Uh, a, it does not do 120. Okay. It's the only thing it doesn't do, but it does do a uh, 4k HDR. And That's still nice. I find That's... that it has, and I find that it has less latency than the Elgato because the Elgato still does have a little tiny bit of latency. Okay. That's called the Aver Media Live Gamer 4k. Oh yeah. Uh, then, I ran yes. into this. I ran into this issue when I got the Elgato that does HDR and it's HDR support fucking sucks ass. Like the pass through works well, but the actual recording had like terrible fucking tone mapping it was awful. And so okay. now I've, I've, after many years of loyal Elgato wing, I'm now just like Aver media all the way. Uh, so yeah, that's basically the uh, one upped uh, version of what I had got there. Although wait, hold on. This is the, um the PCIe uh yeah that's a PCI express card uh, okay all right so then we'd have to you're yeah. you're going to run into more limited options running at the like the the portal USB yeah exactly yeah okay well for now i'm unplugging between sessions and just going back into 
you know the, the well the yeah TV. okay because if you're if you're using the portable then that unplug is a lot less of a pain in the ass than me washing over the back of that pc over there and doing that 100 percent, yeah and and the um the artesian builds pc i'm using is mm -hmm. it has the elgato pcie uh capture in it but i don't capture to that computer you know mm -hmm. so uh the setup is more based on the portables i've got all right, I'll look at that for next time. But if it if the real like if it if it had 120 pass through and HDR, then I 120 would pass through is a, a fucking we're not, ways away. I think we're not there yet. No, but if it if it does, then I will 100 percent go swap up my setup. You know, because mm. as is, I don't want to have to get up for this shit if I can avoid it. Um, but it's fucking worth it because you know that those colors coming through that you know. Like what? Well, like like watching Demon Souls going through the um, the capture is still gorgeous, but like man, does it look that much nicer when I'm just by myself playing it properly? Yeah, you know. Uh, I remember having like the portable Elgato set up on like my old TV, and I had it set up with through the 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 PS4 for like two years, mm -hmm. and then like I unplugged it and put it back in for whatever reason, and it was like, oh holy shit. Mm -hmm. I should really unplug this fucking thing. Yeah, when I'm not using it, because holy crap, FF7, FF7. I had like it punched me in the face how much color I was missing and how much be more beautiful the game was than I even thought because I was playing it through my capture device. You know, like ugh. Anyway, um, yeah, give it, give it, give it maybe two years or so. Um, we'll see where things go. I do expect though, like with everything, and I remember when we were in QA and compliance and like actually doing tests for like the, you know, the, the idea of like, okay, next gen is around the corner. HD TVs are the new thing. 16.9 is the new video game resolution. 4.3 is going away. Like, mm -hmm. you know, composite cables, component cables, like all this stuff were still a part of our test uh, on the test floor. And um, it was always a matter of just like one by one every year with each revision to the guidelines it would just slowly become more and more about the next, the cutting edge shit, you know? But you could also see what wasn't going to um, be the priority because on the PlayStation guidelines, I remember there was a set of rules about 3D TVs because 3D TVs oh, were yeah. a slight push back in the day and we had some guidelines and a couple of games that actually used it including um, some truck game. I forget the, which one it was. And it was like, okay, go test out this 3D TV in the corner. We have one of them. Go fucking make sure that everything displays properly. And you're like, you can just keep track of, are these guidelines going to expand or retract? And then within a couple versions, they started getting smaller and it was just eventually a non-thing because it's like, oh, false alarm. We thought the tech was going in this direction, but it didn't actually go this way. You know, fucking 3D TVs was just a fucking stupid joke. Yeah, uh, no, not Excite Truck. That is a Nintendo game. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, 3D 3D TVs represented like sometimes new tech comes out and it and it represents a potential, but you can't go all in on it because the market might not adopt it. And in this case, fuck no, did they not adopt it? And curved TVs, they didn't adopt that. You know what I mean? Like, there's a bunch of shit where. Like, these manufacturers just had to abandon it because, like, people were not biting, you know? Um, so, yeah. It, oh, by it's the way, it's well, be a little like that. Uh, I was hint, I tipped off by the chat and I checked out on the avermedia.com website myself. Your max pass through and record resolutions for the Live Gamer 4K GC573 is 2160p with 60 or. 1440 144 and 1080 240 okay so on a playstation 5 there will never be a fucking game that runs at 4k 120 <laughs> mm. i think uh devil may cry 5 kicks you down to 1080p when you do 120 hertz well so I'm, that i mean probably do it i'm not that bothered in the sense that at the end of the day, it's going to have to fucking crunch itself onto Twitch and YouTube anyways. And <sighs> YouTube bitrate does what it does. So we're not going to see... Dude, that... 
the day that Twitch increased the available bit rate from six to eight, I was just like, oh my god. Yeah, you don't care about YouTube bit rate anymore, right? Like you're done. Like that's your. I don't care about YouTube bit rate. You're just look. Yeah, you're just on the Twitch mode. See, I'm still paying attention to that shit on both sides, and uh, you know, well, um, Twitch's Twitch's bit rate is is comparable to YouTube's now, so mm. it's not that big a deal. But but it, because of what happens in the end of the at the end of the process, um, it, it doesn't end up. To it's me, at really least, it ends up being mm -hmm. um, also like in addition to that, like it goes through an extra step because Min has to actually process the video, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So you're you're losing a little bit each time anyway, to some degree. Uh, but for me personally, it's just like, oh yeah, it would be nice to fucking get as much of that going through as possible. Well, this is a fucking inside baseball conversation that that didn't uh, didn't expect it to go this way.